Hi, welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. In this episode, I'm going to tell you about our top five supermarket baits. Let's start at the bottom of the pile with number five. Now, cheese, wow, there's a lot of different smells, flavours, tastes, even textures. You want really, I think, a strong smelling cheese. Now, you can get sort of mature cheddar like this one, and that gives out more smell. Now, there's a couple of species that spring to mind immediately, barbel and chub. Called a lot of chub on cheese. It was my main standby bait years ago. A lot of other species will take it as well. It goes cold in cold, in cold weather. You make a paste, it still goes cold. But this is how I hook them personally. Now for cheese, when I fish cheese, I like to use a big hook. Barb will have a big mouth, chub have a big mouth, and even carp, because I've caught carp on cheese as well. I'm using here, well you need something substantial, a size eight, size six, size four. I've even gone to a size two. Now, you can use a cube of this, which is dead easy, because when it comes out the fridge, you can use a cube like this, push it through, but push it through slightly to one side and very slightly. Now the drier the cheese, the more crumbly it's going to get. I'm going to crumble this one to show you. Look, just see how it breaks apart, just like this. So what I would do is just, you could, you could use a baiting needle if you wanted, but I'll try and push it, see if we get this to work. You see, you've got the square. I go 40, I use the diagonals, go 45 degrees through there. That's the sort of widest point. But when I get through onto the shank, like that, I pull it right through onto the line, but I turn it around and just leave it. So you see how loose it is like that? So, so it's just left loose. And then as the, as the chub or the bubble pick it up, you know, you're going to get an instant little prick there. Did I say that? You're going to get a, a good hookup just there. Now, the, a, a better way, especially if you're fishing in the winter, is this. Let's pull this off. Makes you want to go fishing now. Get your piece of cheese, cut it off, and then you've got to mould it and keep squeezing and squeezing and squeezing, crushing it and squeezing it around. Now, years ago, what they used to do in the winter was mix their cheese with cotton wool to stop it going hard in the winter. Because in the winter, when the water's very, very kneading I mean, the heat from my fingers and kneading it like this is making it go lovely and soft. This is my main bait for chub now. Let's get that, you get all that texture. And another thing is, keep it out of the sun. If you're in the summer, it will sweat up. And then it just goes very, very soft. So there you go, there's a nice, a nice ball, a nice pellet of cheese there. You can see, look, I can squeeze that together. And then what I do is I just put my hook in there, push it in, I can completely cover the hook in a ball like that. You can see it swinging there. There's no way the fish can see the hook. But here's a totally awesome fishing tip in a river, Squeeze it flat, because if it's clear, you can see that there's a bigger area of cheese to see like that, and it lays flat like that on the riverbed, and the current won't wash it away quite so quickly, whereas if it's a circle, it'll roll away. That's my cheese. It's great. Chub and barber will be the premier species for that bait. So, in at number four is the humble prawn. Now prawns, obviously you can get worldwide, internationally. You, can, you don't have to just use them for freshwater species. You can catch things like wrasse and any kind of salt, small saltwater species on them as well. Our primary species on prawns are generally perch, carp, and if we're sea fishing, black bream. Let me show you how I hook them. Now in um, packets of prawns, they obviously come in different sizes. You've got small ones, you've got slightly larger ones. What you need to do really is match your hook size to the size of the prawns that you're using. When we're perch fishing, we use anything from size four down to size two sometimes with carp fishing. You can't really uh, scare the fish away because you can cover that hook with the prawn itself. If you take a look at the prawn, the actual shape is very similar to the curve of the hook. So they can be quite easy to hook. Now you've got your kind of hard part on the outside and these are peeled and cooked prawns, but you've got your soft fleshy part in the middle here and that's the part where I'm gonna put the hook through. So I'm just gonna match the curve of the prawn and like putting worms on a hook, you just feed the prawn by pushing it up. And that tends to go over the hook then. And then as you get towards the tail of the prawn, you come out and you can straighten it all up. 
And if you wanted to, if you're getting bites that are finicky and the fish aren't really feeding, you could snap that tail off, or I tend to just leave it just like that, so that the hook point is just about showing. And in at number three, and boy, was this a hard one for me to get in number three. Me personally, whoa, I think it's worth more than number three. Yes, it is the humble hot dog. Hot dog is soft, sometimes it's smoked, and they definitely have a different smell to lunch and meat. This is how I hook them. Right, I nip off the end there, and you can see inside there, the skin's around the outside, it's soft in the middle. You want to measure a little bit longer than the length of the hook you're using. So about there, and trust me, Barb will absolutely love this stuff, as you can't. So you should be able to push that through with your finger, but I, I push it through there, and because it's spongy, I get hold of the hook and just pull it through. Now it doesn't make, matter if bits break off, because I can force that shank around and just leave it inside if I just put it tight. There, you might be able to see that there. There again, I specify the hook point needs to be really showing. You know, if you're doing free line and you're just going to strike, and you're straight onto that fish. Now, if you're fishing at distance, you could, and I have done this, go a little bit shorter with it and go through the skin sides from one side to the other. But of course, where it's rounded there. Just show you, I'll put it through. You can see there's no way the hook point can be, can be shown. Whichever way I put that, it's going to bury in the bait. So if you're fishing at distance, and, and don't forget this will cast it quite a way. Now even this is free line I'm talking, there's no legs on here, this is just basic bait free lining. Then that's going to give you a much stronger hook hold. If you want to cast even further, all you do is get a blade of grass and just slot it right through there. Just through the bend of the hook and push it down or pull it down like that so it, it, sit, it sits snugly but don't forget that's a support piece there for casting it also means when you strike you're going to have to strike that much harder and listen guys if you're a bream fisherman don't neglect a little sliver like this smaller hook if you want look there and you go through it's a disc we call it disc fishing it lays lovely and flat on the bottom and just put the hook through and just tuck it so it's just resting like that look now if that was setting amongst a load of these, throw them in, loose feed, don't be afraid to loose feed because they're quite cheap these, they all go in with ground bait, they're laying on the bottom of there, I'll tell you what I do, shake it all around, there we go guys, other than seeing the fishing line, tell me which one's got the hook in it, they're all the same size, the hook's buried sideways in that disc, it's really good for bream and it's really good for carp. And the runners up in the top five totally awesome supermarket baits is bread. Bread you can get absolutely anywhere almost. You can get it really, really cheap and you can almost sometimes get it free when you go to bakeries and ask them if they've got any bread that's just about going off or going stale. Grab that bread, take it fishing. It's a really cheap bait, it's a really effective bait. Can be used sea fishing, can be used freshwater fishing and it can be used on the surface and it can be used underneath on the river or lake bed or seabed. Let me show you a couple of ways of how I hook it. There's two, basically two kind of main baits here. We've got the crust, which is the brown bit here, which is uh, what I've cut off, and you've got the white, fluffier part of the bread. I'll start with the crust first, and what I've done is cut it up into small pieces. You can obviously choose the size of your piece. That's the great thing about bread, is you can choose the size of the bait that you want to use. And there's a number of different ways you can hook this, but when we're carp fishing especially, we tend to go through the soft, white, fluffy part first, then come out of the hard crust, put it through, turn the hook point round, go back through the crust just to give it a bit of extra support. And then if you look at that, the hook is very well covered but the point is always showing because you want that point to be showing so that you can actually get a better chance of the hook hold. And that will be cast out. You can dunk it, because it's crust it's very light, uh, very light. it's difficult to cast. Dunk it in the water first and then cast it. Obviously after a few dunks or once it's been in the water for a while, it will just fly off the hook and then you need to get yourself another bait. Now because this is a crust and it's very buoyant, this would be used, we would use this predominantly for floater fishing, so on the surface, mostly for carp and probably you could trot it down the river as well. Now if you wanted to get a bait uh, a little bit down deeper in the water column, then it's probably best to use the white fluffy part of the bread. 
All you do is you can pinch off, again, any size you like really, depending on the species you're fishing for and how the bite is. And what I tend to do is you can just fold it a couple of times first and then fold it around your hook, being sure to leave the hook point clear and pinch down this end near the eye of the hook. Don't pinch at the fluffy end near the point of the hook because when that lands in the water, bread expands and that will expand and cover up the hook but it will also be soft so that when you strike as a fish takes it, it will strike straight through the bait nice and easy. Again, that would probably throw. If you wanted it to sink and you wanted it to roll it on the bottom, then you would pinch it further up near the hook and the more you can press bread, generally, the more likely it will be that it will sink. And if you're fishing rivers and things like that and you want it to not move so much, you can make it more of a flat pattern like that, similar to the cheese, and that can lay flat on the bottom like that with the hook point up. Bread is a highly versatile bait. You can fish it up on the surface as free lined, or you can float fish it, or you can ledger it on the bottom with a small weight. And in top spot, number one pole position is, yeah, you got it, sweet corn here. Now, really we chose this because a lot of beginners can use this. Bread can come off the hook, sweet corn, I mean, it catches a, a huge variety of fish, especially fresh water. Uh, you can catch mullet on them in the sea if, as well if you want, you know, that's been done before. But for fresh water, if you're a beginner, a can of, or even a frozen packet of sweet corn, really, do you know what I mean? You've got a long way to go before you can find a bait that's so versatile over such a wide variety of species. This is how I hook them. Now, if I want species like roach, rudd, perch, basically a small species, obviously I just want a single grain of corn and a small hook. Try and match the hook size to the size of grain you're using. Now if I just show you, whether you're going to see this here, that was a can of sweet corn, and look at the different sizes there. There's two different sizes, even in the one can. So I've got two different bait sizes. Something like roach, we should say, a single grain of corn. Okay, now you can cook it through the skin. If you look, the kernel itself is soft inside there, where it's obviously been snapped off from what they call the cob. So you can, I'm just going to hook this basically to cover the hook. So I would go in through the soft part first. This would be about a size 12 hook. And as I'm going in, I'm actually pushing the bend down further to try and bury the hook and just bring the point out there. And then I can push it down so it's hanging out. That's a single one for you can fish out on the bottom. Brilliant for tench. Or you can even double it up, put an extra one on. But I think a single grain of corn is ideal for small fish, float fishing, even ledgering. So that's one way to do it, or you can use a bunch of them with what we call a string of pearls. You can look, this is the same hook size we're using, um, you know, about a four there. Get a big, big kernel there, and what I can, well, the way I, this is the way I do it. I would go in through the hard end first, bringing the hook point out, the soft end, like this, because I know that's going to get to about the bend of the hook there. Then I'd select another piece about the same size, I suppose for carp and tench I'd be doing this. And then I go in through the soft side, again, roll it around the hook. What you can do is actually push this one up over onto the line there. You can see it's sliding up and down the line. While I get this one rolled around the bend, out at basically the hard end, that's the soft end there. Now that just sits just, just nice and snug there. And this, if I push it back down, watch. It marries up those two snapped off parts, the soft parts, marry up, that almost looks like one grain of corn to me. And if I was a carp with that laying down there with some loose bits scattered around it, again, all they'd see is that, well, point, and that's, that's in clear water. If you're fishing at night, they don't see anything. If you're fishing in muddy water, they don't really see it. If you wanted, of course, just put a tag end on it and just put, nick it lightly through the skin, you could put a third one on there. I personally like the two like that, because I can even keep working that around, barely seeing the hook there. Now you can see, you can barely see the point in the hook. So there you have it, two ways to hook sweet corn. That's our number one supermarket bait. Could catch you anything. Now you must have a supermarket somewhere near you, wherever you live in the world, wherever this food can be bought, you've got a chance of one of these five baits. Certainly bread and sweet corn are the main ones I would guess. But don't forget guys, even if you've got stuff left over, you can freeze it. So once that can's open, in the freezer with it, it keeps, I've done it, 
sweet corn, even bread, I'll go and buy two or three loaves, freeze it down. Take it out when you want it, use it two or three times, and don't forget you can also use it for ground bait. Thanks very much for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and do you know what guys, it'd be really interesting to find out your top five supermarket baits. Thanks for watching.